Could be an exciting day's fishing today. I'm going to a lake where I first started carp fishing. What's happened is the lease is running out in September and there's no syndicate on there at the minute because we're in the end of June, beginning of July. Around that period, probably got two months of fishing on there if I want to do it. So I'm going to go and have a look today. Got loads of bait in the back of the van, loads of little bits, boilies. Got a float of fishing gear with me. I've got a few particles and that, a few jars of that with me as well. So and try and catch some of the lovely fish that are now in there. Right, let's get sorted out. Let's get going. There's the keys. Let's get on the road. Let's do this. I'm so excited. Look, look at this. Look. An empty car park, nobody here. You don't get many opportunities like this. Absolutely fantastic. I'm, you know, I've got a great syndicate that I can fish with some really big fish in it at the minute. But I'm just happy to come and have a private fishing. Who wouldn't take advantage of that? So, um, gonna go and shut the gate now. Just lock myself in, have a little wander around, see if we can find something, see if we can catch something. Just come out of the car park. I don't know if you can see that out there. I can see fish already. All right, literally just coming out of the car park. There's one down here as well. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. Let's put a few mixes out and see what happens. Sometimes with situations like that, and fish don't really move much, but you might have been better just to free line a, a single hook bait out there. Sometimes when fish can be a bit spooky, your opportunity can come just like that. I, I haven't fished this for a long time, so I'm just going to try what I know. Um, one thing I'm seeing straight away out there is quite a few roach, or just little ones, and they're attacking the, attacking the floaters, and that can spook the carp as well, because there's like too much activity on the surface. Just see what happens. If they do spook off these fish and they don't start taking, then the next opportunity I'll just freeline a free line a hook bait on them. Won't give them any free offerings. Let's see what happens. That don't look a bad fish, that one on the right. I can't see why these fish won't be catchable. There's another one coming in from the left look. Yeah, yeah, he just took. I can't see why not. That one's taken as well, isn't it? Yeah, come on. Can't wait to show Oscar the footage, he's going to want to come down here. I'm not going mad, they're just picking off the odd one. Just literally straight out the car park and found these fish. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? Absolutely love it. I thought they might have spooked off, but no, if anything, more fish have come into the area. There's that one coming through. There's a couple off there to the right, but... All right, let's keep a little bit of bait going in. They do love these expander pellets, absolutely love them. Get a bit of bait going in. I'm going to get the rod sorted. Just going to might as well fish light, I can't see any problem. Yeah, nice shoulders on that one. This is going to be tricky, isn't it? Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Right, I was just going to drag all this stuff out and start fishing, but I thought I'd show you what I've got in here and what I bought with me today. So I thought they were going to be on top. It's really, really hot at the minute. So everything in there. I've got two 11-foot surface rods and then rod bags. I've got a little travel rod there that I've been using a little bit. Um, went to Greece recently and took that, and it was absolutely lovely little rod. Little reels on there. Also, I've got um, Dan's, my little boy's little surface rod. That's about five foot. I think Oscar's is five and a half foot I've got there and I've had loads of fish on these little rods recently. When you're getting feeding in close like that, there's no point in using great big stuff. It's great sport. Um, I think Oscar's got eight pound line on it and Downs has got ten. 
So, and Dan's is a little bit more of a brutal rod, so more snag fishing, or you know, if there's a few pads about, I use that. And then my trusted surface baits on there, there's spicy shrimp and brawn prop up, and the surface baits, which are really, really nice. I've got into using them, and I'll probably free line with them now. They get really oily, they've got quite a bit of weight in them as well, so casting with them is fantastic. Little tackle box of bits there, so I've got all my little quarter hooks, and I use tend to use wide gapes and um, you know the mixer hooks and stuff like that, all perfect for what I love doing. A quick look around in my van, then got loads of bait with me. Starting to panic already about whether I've got enough floaters. Got a few boilies and stuff like that on the bottom. Also, I've got some halibut pellets and things like that if I want to start fishing on the bottom. So that's it, really. Just took me 10 minutes to sort it out from a garage and uh, away we go. What I'm doing is getting a couple of rods ready. It can be quite fast and furious floater fishing. I'm just getting these ready. One for close range. So I've got this little five and a half foot. This is actually a tip section of a surface creeper. And then I've got a surface creeper 11 foot. Now this is great for short range work, this one. But something I've really noticed with the short stuff is that if you do get a long cast, it's really difficult to pick the line up on the stripe. Whereas if you've got something like an 11 foot, that really picks up that slack line that you're having free lining really quickly. Right, enough of my chat. Let's get over there and see if we can catch one they're feeding. that one I don't quite know how there's another fish taken just down to the right down there in the scum and we'll try for that one Finally got one on. It's quite strange on the take. I couldn't work out which one was mine. I'll just give it a little tug and the fish was on. I thought it might have been, but. Chuff of that. I've got this cracking little mirror. Just a double, low double. Really chuff of that low. And it was quite a good sport that it was proving more difficult than I first thought it would be to catch them, which is great. I really enjoy it. Really, really chuff of this one. Let's get it back, get some more bait out. See if we can catch some more. You beauty.
I'm absolutely loving my fishing here but I must say that it's a little bit spooky being here on your own because when I was growing up there was 40 pegs on this lake and if you didn't get here till 5 o'clock in the morning you were struggling to get a good swim and um, just behind me I don't know if you can see that point in the distance over there but that was where I caught my first double 12 pound common and I can think of hundreds of stories here of instances uh, so yeah it's a really really busy lake and um, it's just changed completely gone into a syndicate and then it's coming to an end which is really really sad um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with it in the future I'm just going to enjoy my time reminiscing about all the things that happened here lots of friends that I still have now close friends I met at this lake and um, reminiscing about the carp that I caught the carp that I see and uh, just leave you with a very famous story which I'm still looking for in here now there used to be a fish cruising around on the top with his shoulders sticking out that people you always used to say about catching humpy in this lake and you often used to see it cruising about so I wonder if it's still in here maybe there's a big 40 pound comet that's never been caught Up with that, hey. another cracking little mirror. Really chuffed with just a few hours fishing down here. Really, really chuffed. I'm going to get this one back. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, and thank you. Take care. Super stuff.